Hey, Peppin. Lemonade, lemonade. Whoa, what do you got going on over there? Oh, well, I'm just selling some lemonade. Oh, okay. Do you have a permit for that? Per- permit? Uh, no, I'm, I'm just... You know, no, 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 no. You can't be selling foods without a permit. You need... We're going to have to get the health inspector in here and figure out what's going on. That, that's that's frightening. I'm just, I'm just running a small business. I'm a no, child. I'm a child just selling lemonade. That's too bad. You should know the law. This is important. It doesn't apply to some people. This is a... It applies to everyone. That's terrible. That's that's so terrible. I don't know how you can do this to me. Why? 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 Because, you know what? It, you need to learn the law. You and I, we need to talk. Welcome back. So glad you guys could join us. I am here once again with my best friend, Nathan Pepin. How's it going, Pepin? Doing well, doing well. I am feeling zesty with that acidity from the lemonade. Oh, yeah. Citrus, man. Citrus. Is that what so it is? how much sugar do you put in your lemonade? Uh, probably like two sugar full spoons. Okay, yeah. You have spoons made out of sugar and you put <laughs> two of them in. Yes. Okay, I love it. How about you? exactly the same amount <laughs> except i use tablespoons and you use teaspoons oh i think I, yeah i guess so so i guess it's not exactly the same amount I, to, be, to be honest though i usually use sugar cubes because sugar cubes are advantageous okay well fair enough so talk to me about lemonade stands it seems that some people have issues with little kids who run lemonade stands and i've even heard of cops like shutting them down what what's what's up with that so i dug into, into this a little bit here and i have mixed feelings on it so there's been cases of kids running lemonade stands and cops will bust them but more often it's like neighbors complaining and saying this kid shouldn't be allowed to sell lemonade because they don't have a permit and they're selling you know food or some drink and you officers need to stop this you need to put an end to it and usually they give in i think or maybe they don't usually and we just hear about the times when they do but yeah plenty of little kids have their lemonade chance shut down because they don't have a permit to sell food so is there is there no sort of a protective law for being able to sell in small quantities certain things versus in mass quantities as an established business maybe maybe not but it's like how often is that going to get hashed out in just an everyday kind of police call like it that? It would only need to be hashed out once, and then you set a precedence, and it takes it from there. But I, I, like most police officers, don't really know what the law is to begin with. I mean, they have like the basics down. Whoa, Nate, we're getting into some heavy shit here. Maybe we should tiptoe a little bit more before we deep dive into whether the police actually know the laws they're enforcing or not. They know like basic laws, right? But then when it comes down to the nitty gritty, like is it? allowable for a kid to be running a lemonade stand that's where it gets confusing like there's the precedent for the uh, you need a food license for that but beyond that like there's a lot of nuance and gray area there where it's you know who knows a lot of that really this has been happening for decades kids have run lemonade stands i mean this is old old stuff so why has this not been hashed out before and maybe it has but it's, it's such a small thing that do you really want to sue over it like well it depends how much money the lemonade stands making <laughs> i guess that's the question yes but most parents aren't going to like they might raise a fuss but they're not going to sue the uh, the state to get money for the damages because you know it, it's just a kid's lemonade stand mm-hmm. right? they'll, they'll go to the media they'll go to the news they'll create a fuss but it, it's like what can they really do to get it back besides spending like thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to uh, make a case? So I know before we started rolling, we were talking about this vaguely and you said kids who run lemonade stands should be shot. Can you talk to that? (laughs) I did not say that. (laughs) What exactly is it about kids running lemonade stands that you hate? So I don't like that. They not, not hate, hates not the word, but I do think that there is a case to be made that maybe kids shouldn't be running lemonade stands and handing out food because that food is not governed appropriately. 
It's, they don't have the proper appropriate licenses or um, requirements to do it. And I'm not necessarily for government regulation or government force in that kind of way, but I do think there needs to be checks with certain things. I mean, maybe not legal ones, but I learned something from being a coffee store manager. Yeah, we made like sandwiches and stuff. And I used to be on the side of like, uh, I'd see these documentaries about people who would sell hot dogs on the side of the road and get their business shut down. And it was just terrible because it's the law coming down on these arbitrary standards about food safety. And then I learned about these standards for food safety, and they're very easy to maintain and achieve. And if someone's not maintaining those standards, well, they shouldn't be selling food. Like, just, just number one, because they're endangering people. Number two, because it's just so fucking easy to like obtain. Hmm. So I think that if people are to sell lemonade, there needs to be some standard for that. Now, when you have an established, you know, permanent business like a coffee shop versus a pop-up they're going to do it this one day and then they're going to be bored of it lemonade stand should caveat mTOR not apply there buyer beware should that not be to your discretion to be like that looks like a filthy little child i am not going to purchase their baked goods yeah yeah i mean this this is where i agree and this is where i'm conflicted as well because the issue I have, or maybe not the issue, but let's say that someone does go to that lemonade stand and they get sick off the product. They, I think, would legally have the right to sue the child, i.e. the parents of the child, for getting sick. Uh, similar way, if you go to a bake sale and people are selling baked goods and those baked goods have something in them which makes you sick and you know cause you to be gravely ill, you can go after whoever made those goods or whoever was the seller of those goods. So I think there is that legal, legal complexity there. And is that the way to handle it or is the way to handle it to prevent it to begin with? I, I do not agree that you should be able to sue a child because you get sick on their lemonade. So you're not suing the child, but you're suing the owner of the child or the guardian of the child. And but it's, it's the same but way. You're, you're suing the person who owns the stand. And because the parent is responsible for the child's actions, you're suing. Really, you're suing the child. You just There's just an extra step in doing so. You're kind of. So, yeah, you could say it, look at it that way. But it's like you're more suing the guardian of the child for not being responsible for the child in the same way as. Like if you get bitten by a dog, like a dog that escaped from somebody's yard, you sue the owner of the dog, not the dog, because the owner was responsible for keeping the dog on the leash. Mm -hmm. And then you're, I, I think, I don't know, I think this is a little different because the, a dog is not the same as a, a dog biting you a, or protecting its own property or I, I have a lot of thoughts on a dog biting as well because the dog ultimately ends up paying the ultimate sacrifice there and most times gets killed for biting somebody but when you have a child with a lemonade stand you don't get to kill them mm -hmm. you instead have to just sue so i i think suing a child because you got sick on their lemonade is fucking stupid and should not be allowed i think if you buy something from somebody underage you're assuming the risk yourself i think that should be implicit see i i i, I want to agree with you and i do agree with you but i also disagree with you because this is where i'm conflicted right because i like Ultimately, yeah, I think people should just be responsible for their decisions and accept the risk. But I also think that the way society is structured right now is it's assumed that you are protected from these uh, from these risks from being like if someone unknowingly poisons you, they're still responsible for that unknowing for for doing that. Mm -hmm. So I, th that's where I get confused. And yeah, sure, they're a child and everything, but. The child should be administered by, or the child should be governed by the parents, and the parents should assume guardianship over those child's actions. Mm -hmm. I.e., selling the lemonade stand. If these kids are selling lemonade stand without the parent being involved, then that's a little like not a little strange. Like it's the parents not doing. There's this negligence. Mm. Well, uh, so I I don't necessarily disagree that there should be some sort of governing force over over the the child being able to do this thing in the first place to make sure that it is uh you know up to reasonable standards but i still think that in a private sale of an on a person to a person which is what this is this is not an established business this is person to person sale it's on the buyer to beware it's on the buyer to take to assume that responsibility if i buy a guitar from you and the guitar ends up being broken 
like I should have inspected the product before I purchased it. It's buy as is, and I can't sue you for that. So is the difference between, or, or I should ask this question first, a little girl selling Yelmanade stand, like say once or twice in our lifetime compared to like a corporation who's selling products every day or a bakery or a coffee shop? Uh, yes. And is the difference, what's, what's the difference there exactly? The difference there is that one is livelihood and one is just like a side thing that they're doing. Like one is like, that's what they do. That's what they're known for. And they, sh- they're experts in doing so and like a, a little girl selling it on or you know a child selling on the side of the road is just them having fun more than anything realistically or trying to to do something uh, or learn you know how business works it's not something established it's not this this pl- that like you have plans you have checks and balances you have employees there's so much more that goes into a big business than into just something overnight Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'm trying to think of what the legal distinction would be there because maybe one's a business and one's just a uh, an event and maybe that's the way to kind of look at it because the little girl doesn't have a business she's doing an event where she's selling lemonade and similar like when people do like these uh food sales where they make like baked goods and stuff a big sale they they don't have a license to sell those things, but they still sell them anyway, and it's just fine. And I, I wonder what the culpability is in regard to the difference between, say, a normal sale and a sale, or and, and no sale. So if you come over my house and you partake of some of my lasagna, uh, you know, that's fine. If you get sick off it, I didn't sell it to you, right? But you can maybe still be, you know, culpable for... Or maybe you can still sue me for getting sick off it, but is there a difference there if I sell you that lasagna at my house or if I just offer it to you for free? Uh, I mean, I think legally and logistically, yeah, I mean, there's a there's a difference there. But, I, I mean, you could exploit loopholes if that's the case and say, I'm not selling lemonade, I'm giving away lemonade, and I'm taking donations. Mm-hmm. Then you're not selling anything, you're collecting donations and you happen to have refreshments at your donation stand. Yeah, I think that would be a great loophole for somebody to exploit to, because who's going to go to a little girl's lemonade stand, take their lemonade and not give them anything? Like nobody's going to do that. That okay? Maybe one person will do that, but like the majority of people, I think, would make up for that. Yeah, so that's a good point. I know some places actually do do use those kind of loopholes where they say we're not doing this, but we're just offering it up there, which is a way. I'm not sure if it applies to this circumstance for that reason. Like, you can't have a coffee shop and say, hey, we're just giving coffee away, but people happen to pay us 250 which we require. You know, it's okay. Mm-hmm. But uh, people do that with, uh, what is it, uh, those, like, Team Four Star. They make Dragon Ball Z abridged, mm-hmm. and they will take donations on their Patreon to uh, edit the episodes and all that kind of stuff. But they're not being paid to uh, produce the content directly. They're just getting paid... You know, just monthly donations. If they happen to use that money to work on the episodes, you know, it just happens. That's how it works. Mm. Like they're not getting paid to to uh, work on copyrighted issues. Right. No, I mean that 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 probably allows that to be considered art instead of. But I mean, you can pay for art regardless. The so lemonade. So I can't imagine being a cop and having to shut down like a little kid's lemonade stand. That just seems petty. It would definitely suck, but if it's the law and you're supposed to enforce the law, you know, can you really blame them? Yes. Y- yeah? Yes. Oh, okay. We like, have free will and free thought. Like, if if, uh, the, if the law is, like, that fucked, like, you need to... I think that every human being, regardless of their job, needs to abide by moral principles. And if it's something immoral, then you shouldn't do it, whether it's the law or not. See, I will agree, but I also say that they're just doing their job in a way. Cause, yeah, and so were the Nazis. Yeah. But it, it's like, I can't really, if someone does something like that, you know, they probably value their their livelihood and they're just trying to make some money. I, I mean, personally, get a, I, get a real job. Stop being a fucking pig. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't laughing, Nathan. Yeah. <laughs> see, see, I, I think I can. I, I mean, I agree. 
I, I don't disagree. Uh, but I also don't want to like demonize those people who are just you know just following orders to some degree. I mean, I think there's a line, and I know there's a lot of cases out there. So, for instance, there's this article I read about uh, in some beach city. There's a law in the books. There's actually a lot of laws in books and places, but there's a law in the books saying that uh, women are not to be uh, uncovered at any time. So they're supposed to be fully covered. Not not like like a head drop or anything, but you know they're supposed to be just like dressed up. They're not supposed to be exposing any like belly skin or boob skin or anything like that. They shouldn't be wearing thongs or uh, bathing suits. Uh, essentially, this lady is complaining about the bathing suits people are wearing on the beach because she's prudish and she doesn't like it. So she found this law on the books and she's trying to get officers to arrest these ladies and make them cover up because she doesn't like it. So that's kind of using the old law to enforce onto these people and it's because laws are never really repealed when they get put in like they're always just ignored and it's up to the officer to uh decide whether to enforce that law so these laws they choose not to enforce because they're from like you know 1850 and they don't apply to, to say society i mean it's not a law that they take seriously it just hasn't been repealed in a similar way maybe it's a similar thing with the lemonade stand they can choose whether to enforce it or not and that's up to their discretion they can choose whether to enforce any law or not, and that's up to their discretion. And the ones they should be choosing to enforce are the ones that are morally justifiable. Okay. See, I'm not going to disagree here. I mean, because <laughs> it's, it's an extremely reasonable stance. It's, it's, it's a little too reasonable, though. But that's that's a big reason. So there's this thing where there's a bunch of like racist laws on the books too, and it, it's like a. Some states have gotten a lot of flack for having these racist laws, but it, it's like every state does. And it's just legislators are too lazy to repeal anything. It's like in Arkansas, they still allow this. This is still the law. It's like it is, but no one enforces it. Yeah, like you can't tie an elephant up to a lamppost or something. What? I think that's a law in like New York or something. Really? Yeah. That's cool. It's against the law to tie an elephant or a giraffe to a lamppost. That must have happened like one time, and it did, they ruined it for everyone else. They're everyone else. They're, <laughs> what if it's like a stuffed elephant and you tie it? Like, where's the where's the line there? Hmm, that's a good question. I think that would have to be hashed out with the law, and no one's gonna try it. Or if they do, the police aren't really gonna like get involved. No one's gonna sue to preserve the right to tie a stuffed elephant to the lamppost because that gets. Why do you pay like ten thousand dollars to do that? Oh, because you're a dick. For the same reason that you would shut down a child's lemonade stand. Now, there were some kids in the the park I live at that were having a lemonade stand. So I went out and uh, I gave them a donation of whatever change I had. I don't I don't even know how much it was. And they're like, oh, do you want uh, do you want this this baked good? And it was like this disgusting smashed thing. And uh, or do you want some of this? This is a good one. This one's gross. Don't drink that one. And I'm like, why do you why do you even have the gross one still around? And I'm like, no, I'm good. You can just have the money. Like, I didn't care about the good, obviously. I cared about the that they were attempting to do something to to learn about business. Um but uh, like I wanted to to ask them questions and to to like get involved in it a little bit and like be like, why should I why should I buy from you? What what what's your stance? Like what's good? But it just felt it felt weird to ask all those questions. I didn't know like where the line was, so instead I just gave them money. But I, I don't think I would ever want to actually drink or eat anything that they were providing. It just didn't seem. I mean, it definitely was not in a sanitary situation. But yeah, is it all right to to donate to a stand that you don't you're not actually making a purchase from? Yeah, because you support their cause. Um, you like the idea of them selling things to get money. You're supporting their adventure. Uh, I, I'm the same way as you in that way because I'm not very trustworthy with f- not. I'm not very trusting with food from places. Uh, it's kind of a problem I have. Like if someone gives me like like some brownies, homemade brownies, or some cookies, or uh, some pasta or something, it, unless it's like someone I really, really know, like I won't eat it usually. And I feel like a dick when I do that, but it's like uh, I'm not very trusting when it comes to food people make me or give me. Uh, if I'm at a restaurant, it's a little different because restaurants have a reputation for being trustworthy usually. 
and I know I could sue the restaurant if I had an issue, but I'm not going to sue my friend if I get sick off something to eat. Now, if you know, if you go to a lemonade stand and the lemonade is just crappy, there's nothing like illegal about that. It's just they are serving a bad product and they'll go out of business. That's is that not how capitalism would work? Like why why would we need to shut it down? Uh, legal implications aside, I mean, health reasons are the only real reason I could think of. Also, they're not. I mean, some people. I, I can see some arguments here. So let's say here's an instance. Let's say that someone starts a lemonade stand up in front of my uh, in front of my coffee shop. So people are trying to come into my coffee shop and they see this lemonade stand. So it might deter people from coming into my coffee shop. They're using like the, the land where my coffee shop is, you know, which is my land and using it for their purpose. Uh, or maybe it's supposed to be my walkway. Maybe it's a public walkway, like in a, like a city, but they're kind of set up in a way to maximize their profit, but minimize mine or to take away. So there's an argument there. Like, I think I would be right to kick them off my coffee shop area and say, hey, got to do this somewhere else. Uh, this is a similar thing where the, the, I think there was that thing where people like sell cigarettes outside of like uh, um, like convenience stores and places like that because it happens in New York City a lot, I believe, because the tax in New York City is very high for cigarettes. So people will go to another state, buy a bunch of cigarettes, and then sell those cigarettes outside the stores and try to make money off that way. So that's kind of disrupting a person's business because it, it, it's, it's taking advantage of what people are going there for. Now, if this is in a residential area, like in a cul-de-sac. I mean, there's no other businesses there. I mean, you can make maybe arguments about, say, homeowners association, where maybe there's an agreement in the in there saying, hey, we're not supposed to be having, like, uh, little public side venues here. And, like, those places are just sticks in general. So it's not any surprise that they would enforce those. Yes, like, it is. Like, you, you can enforce that if, if it's a grown-ass adult. Uh, if it's a little kid like mowing lawns or setting up a lemonade stand, you're going to come in and say, it's against your least <laughs> I can set up this stand, little girl. I'm not saying I would, but I'm saying they would. Cause I'm, that's I'm what saying they do. it's fucked. Oh, yeah, but that's what they are. I mean, they're fucked. Oh, yeah. So so um, I have to pull permits sometimes for my work. And in doing so, sometimes it's in the, quote, historical district. And... They don't let you change anything about your house without their written approval, even though you own it and they have zero ownership on it. They claim to own a certain area of the town that they want to maintain to look like how it has always looked. And they call it the historical society. Yep. Yep. That sounds like something I've heard of before. It's so screwed up. If I lived in the historical section of town and I wanted to change the color of my house the color of the roof, the material, uh, the the driveway, I would do it. And there would be no questions. I do not care what the historical society had to say about it. It's kind of a problem because it, it's like, on the one hand, they agreed to those stipulations when they bought the house. Maybe. Uh, actually, good point, maybe. But it's, I don't know if it's up for them to decide that if they don't actually own it. I mean, they, they decide a lot of things and, you know, I'm definitely more libertarian in these areas, so I think they shouldn't decide anything. Mm -hmm. But as far as their ability to do so and their, you know, if we assume the presumption of, say, governmental rights and the ability to zone certain places and, you know, do those kind of things, it, it doesn't that makes it seem like they wouldn't be able to not do that. It, it just seems very silly that so the material that's used on roofs that used to be used 20 years ago, 30 years ago, were three-tab shingles, which nowadays we have architectural shingles that last two, three times as long. Better quality shingle, just about the same price. So obviously you want to upgrade to the new shingle, but these societies won't allow them to. They have to go with the shittier one, but they're paying all of the cost. Mm -hmm. The homeowner pays for everything. Oh, that's messed up. And the society is saying, hey, you have to use this shittier, inferior product no matter what you want because we say so. They're assuming no risk. All they're doing is mandating what you can and can't do. So now you're going to have to replace your roof, your ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 roof every 20 years instead of every 50 years because I say so. Yeah, that's, that's a big issue with these 
like regulations I have is you have people making decisions who don't pay the cost and they are just like considering their own artistic appeal or their own like personal like opinions like you know I really like the idea of these old houses being just the way they are I want to keep it that way and with no consideration for the people who actually have to have like pay for it mm-hmm. it's, it's like okay if, if you're paying it out of your own pocket that's one thing but you're just off the cost to someone else and you know it's just your own whims and ideas about things I, I don't like that mm. so uh, I mean that and that to me is like you're going to shut down a little kid's business just because for what reason? And I would need a fucking really good reason. Like they're standing. I sell lemonade professionally. I'm Minute Maid and there's a little kid selling my competitors mix directly outside my headquarters that I would have an issue with. But some little girl in a cul-de-sac 10 miles away from the nearest store selling some lemonade to her neighbors to raise money to buy a new bike that to me there's no reason to shut that down unless she's one of the ingredients is arsenic and yeah you've, you've put me more on the other side there mm. yeah uh one thing i'll add to the homeowners thing or the uh the, the town kind of thing is uh, i think there's a case in maine where these people bought this house and they bought the house with the intention of you know putting up a new house there then when people heard about that, the, they started getting involved in the government. And this house they bought for like millions and millions of dollars. Like it was a very expensive purchase. Like with the intent of building a new house. I think it was an apartment complex or something. And the, the uh, government, the people got involved in the government and they made it so that these people couldn't change anything with the house. It had to be kept exactly the way it was. And my problem with that and, is that these people made the, you know, the purchase. There's no law or regulation when they made the purchase and then they already sunk the cost into it they can't sell it for the same value now and so you're essentially saying these people they just lost all these billions of dollars because you didn't want them to do what they were doing mm-hmm. i mean if that was the case you should have bought the house yourself or you should have passed the law before someone else bought it mm-hmm. but you're not having any regard for that person and their their will which, you know, the excuse there is, well, they're a multinational corporation who is uh, you know, just making houses because they want to make profit. Well, yeah, sure, but they're playing according to these rules, and you can't change the rules on them because otherwise they wouldn't have bought the house. Mm. Like, if you want to have this preser- preservation of things, you need to pay for it yourself. I think that's one of the amendments in the Constitution that you can't be getting tr- – you can't have a law passed after – you did something and then get in trouble for it. Like if you you're parked on the side of the road in a zone that has no signs. And then when you get back, they just installed a sign and someone's writing you a ticket. You were parked there before the law existed. So I think that they would have a case in saying we made this purchase before that law existed. Therefore we should be able to do what we need to do because the law didn't exist at the time of the initial inception. It might be possible to do that. But then maybe it's not because they might argue that the law's already in place. We're just applying this law to this. You know, the law would be like say uh, preservation of historical homes, mm-hmm. and we're making extending this to now. This is a historical home here. We're not changing the law. We're just saying this is an application of the law in determining this is a historical home. Mm-hmm. In the same way, like uh, someone might buy a house and uh, might have certain presuppositions about it. And then they found out later that the government all of a sudden decides that they are in a flood zone where they hadn't decided before. And they can't exactly fight that because there's already the law about the flood zone being there. They have to pay whatever cost is associated with that. But it just so happens that they changed their mind and now all of a sudden it's a flood zone. Well, if that affects like future thing, I, I mean, I don't know. I still think that there's there's got to be something in place where morality and what's right over supersedes what the law is like that's the point of the law is to to have justice and if the law isn't fighting for justice then what's the point of it i mean you'd, you'd hope that's what the law was for and i think that comes down to police and judges and people who that's their job is to interpret the law the, the you know the the police's job is to enforce the law but the judicial branch's job is to interpret the law and i think they need to interpret the law in the way like they have that Facebook video all the time of that judge in Maine who like is is lenient on some of the laws like I parked there and one minute later I was you know I was I was just getting out 
of work and I was one minute late to paying my to refilling the parking meter and I got a ticket and the guy's like yeah you're fine just just go you don't need to we'll absolve this mm-hmm. like that's the right thing to do that's you're listening to the people it's reasonable it's not somebody blatantly being an asshat it's somebody in a circumstance and I think that that needs to happen more I think that's the point of, that's justice justice isn't always doing what the law says Justice is doing what the right thing is regardless of what the law is. And the law should then reflect that. There should be caveats to the law that say, in this instance, that was the right decision. You did the right thing, even though technically it's against the law. Therefore, we are not going to punish you because it was the right thing to do. Mm, This could go into a very heavy discussion about uh, law and what law should should be and what law is. Mm -hmm. Because this is a big topic of conversation when it comes to things such as like anarchism. And also just in modern day society, because the way people view society right now is as if, as if laws are things which are set in stone, but they're up for interpretation. They're also up for enforcement. And lawyers are very good about reading laws in certain ways or enforcing laws as they're written, because that's the job of a lawyer often is to find a law and enforce it the way it's written. And then it's up for the other lawyers to try to interpret the law in a different way as to such that that person's not applicable to the law, but the way that laws are actually enforced in real life is it's very interpretational, it's very circumstantial, and like you said with a judge, in that instance, you know, he will not enforce it all the time, right, because there's certain interpretations within that, and there's a huge social kind of uh, understanding that happens through the law, which is not exactly clear. There's a lot of ambiguities to the law, and that's where things get really confusing. You know what they say is when life hands you lemons, make a lemonade stand and get sued. That's the saying, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So would you sue a little kid? I mean, it depends on how much of an ass he is. Or she. and Probably she. Would you... What if the lemonade stand was paying for a podcast? Uh, well, no. No, because uh, if she was paying for a podcast, I mean, she'd be donating to us, of course, at uh, patreon.com. Uh, you can look for us. That we... In, what was it called again? I don't know. I don't Whatever. Know. We, just look up We Need to Talk. Look for the two sexy guys in the picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we like microphones as well, so it's pretty cool. And you can donate to us there. You know, a dollar works. Uh, $2, $3, dollars 4, $4, 4 Or don't. And just tell a friend that that works equally as well. Uh, sometimes, you know, I've sometimes I don't have money. And the best thing to do is just uh, word of mouth. It's really powerful and really helpful. Just mention us to anybody. I know a lot of times I'm uh, talking to somebody and they uh, they mention podcasts or I mention podcasts. I'm like, hey, do you happen to listen to podcasts? And then I make recommendations on uh, different shows that they could listen to that um, usually they're in podcastnh.com, the network that we're a part of. Pretty much anything you're looking for as far as uh, podcasting goes, you're going to find a topic that you're going to like there. So check that out, podcastnh.com. Um, or facebook.com slash podcast nh we are facebook.com slash we need to talk show or on twitter twitter.com slash wntt1 check us out and definitely let us know if you would sue a little kid who's running lemonade stand because that's very important because we need to know to avoid you or to invite you on the show and we can talk about it and maybe you can uh, change our mind who knows we will sue you into the ground you will not leave the ground Nate. <laughs> We need to talk. Hey, Peppin. Yo, yo. Do you usually subscribe to entire podcasts, or do you look for specific topics? Well, I try using the search function on my podcast player on my phone. It doesn't work too well. I try using Google. Google, it's not really set up for it, so I honestly have trouble. Why don't you just use Listen Notes? Listen Notes? What's that? It's a search engine for podcasts that doesn't just search for the terms you're looking for in the title of the episode or the title of the podcast, but from inside the episode itself. Meaning if you're looking for a specific topic, you can find specific podcast episodes that are about that topic. You know, that sounds a lot easier than spending the hours and hours I have just trying to find exact right keywords to actually get it to bring up the episode. I mean, usually I just get like a million uh, how to start your own podcast articles. It's really annoying. So that sounds a lot better. Exactly. When you're looking for something to listen to, just go to listennotes.com, type in a topic you're interested in, and you'll get instant gratification, useful results. That's listennotes.com. Check it out now.